This happened a few years ago when I had just moved to a new city. Age 20, female, working and going to school full time. I had a hard time meeting guys my age, so I turned to online dating in hopes of meeting the one. I chose plenty of fish, thinking it somehow wasn't like the other dating sites. This is where I met Andrew. He messaged me first, and there were a few red flags, but I was desperate to talk to someone who wasn't just trying to hook up or score nudes. I noticed all of his pictures were of random pro skateboarders and Nick Cave. Naive, I continued to chat with him because he seemed harmless. I couldn't quite point out what gave me a weird feeling, but it all started off innocent enough, and I thought he was just a little weird and quirky. A few random and weird messages on Plenty of Fish, some song lyrics, long word vomit type monologues, compliments on my red hair. Again, naive, I gave him a link to my personal blog on Tumblr in hopes of having some common interests. Andrew made a Tumblr account that night and went through every single one of my posts, liking each one, going all the way back through years of content. I must have had 500 likes by the next morning. Some time passed. I was no longer interested in pursuing Andrew, mostly due to the fact that all of our conversations were one-sided and just random and bizarre. Every once in a while, he would send me a random message on Tumblr about clouds, his clothes, some more unrelated lyrics, his love of foxes. He actually asked me to go on a date with him, but I told him I had a boyfriend. By this time, I'd been dating my boyfriend for six months. Andrew still continued to like my posts on Tumblr, was reblogging a lot of art, animals, and various interests. He posted a selfie of his face. He looked my age. Messy, long brown hair, beard. I was grateful we had drifted apart and simply deleted and ignored any messages he sent me from his account. One day, I received a message on Tumblr from a girl named Nicole. She said she had recently moved to the city and was looking to make some friends. She had been following me a while and thought we had a lot in common. I looked at her Tumblr and she had quite a bit of content dating back several years. All of her posts related to my own interests and I thought I had met my new best friend. We began chatting for hours, bonding over various things and exchanging experiences. She loved all the same music and seemed like such a cool person. Being new to the city, I still hadn't made many friends and was eager to perhaps start an offline friendship with Nicole. I invited her to my boyfriend's show. I figured it was public and safe. I would be surrounded by people and I had by now added her on Facebook, saw what she looked like and felt comfortable with her. She didn't have many friends or updates on her page, but I attributed that to the fact that she said she was new to the city, an introvert type, and was putting in long hours at a local radio station she worked at. Innocent, naive me believed everything. I was so excited to have made a friend. We had even exchanged numbers and texted daily. I know that the person I was talking to that whole time was indeed Nicole. After chatting for a month, the day finally came. It was my boyfriend's show and I was going to meet her. The doors had just opened so there wasn't many people at the venue yet but I recognized her right away, sitting at a table. I noticed she was not sitting alone. She was sitting with a guy in a toque, with his face shrouded with hair and a beard. My heart literally stopped, because I realized she was sitting with Andrew. My boyfriend was setting up his gear. None of my friends had arrived yet. No one knew at this point about Andrew. Only my boyfriend was aware that I was meeting Nicole at the show. She smiled at me and said hello. She hugged me. He was silent and just stared at me. I awkwardly waved to Andrew. I said, Hey Andrew, we finally meet. He smiled and nodded his head but did not say a word. 
Nicole quickly interrupted, saying, Andrew told me you guys met on Tumblr too. Small world. He is actually my boyfriend. Somehow, I just could not believe the coincidence, but regardless, spent the night with them, chatting with Nicole and being stared at by Andrew. He literally did not say a single word to me the entire night. My boyfriend had no reason to think anything was going on, and for some reason, I was super embarrassed about the situation. So, I did not tell my boyfriend about Andrew that night. Later, I texted Nicole to inquire about her relationship with Andrew. I didn't get a reply. I called her three times, and the phone was out of service. I went online. Her Tumblr was deleted. I went on Facebook. Her account was there, but no longer being updated for the week that I watched it. She didn't respond to any of my messages. I went onto the website for the radio station she apparently worked at, and she was not listed anywhere as a personnel or a volunteer. I later made a friend who worked at this radio station, and she confirmed there was never anyone named Nicole who ever stepped foot into the station or did any of the stuff she claimed to be doing. She effectively disappeared off the face of the earth. I went on to Andrew's Tumblr page and he was still posting art, music, foxes. I decided to creep into what he was liking on Tumblr. All of his likes were of red-headed women in various states of bondage, abuse, Kate Winslet in the Titanic, Goalie from the X-Files, fan fiction about kidnappings and enslavement, red-haired women dressed as boxes and cages. I still thought I had control over the situation. In fact, nothing happened for a while after that. Until a month went by, and I was at the art gallery with some friends. I was going through the exhibits when my heart dropped. Andrew was there too. He followed us through the exhibit for a while, then disappeared. I couldn't figure out how he knew I was at the art gallery on that day. I saw him at a few other events that I could not understand his connection to. No one knew who he was. He just lingered in the background and disappeared. I saw him at a bunch of other shows. A smaller party at my friend's gallery and a pop-up show downtown for my friend's business. My boyfriend had another show a few months later. The band was loading in gear and the bar was empty. Doors had just opened for maybe five minutes, and I was waiting for sound check. I look at the bar and my heart drops again. In full construction uniform, Andrew is at the bar holding his heart hat. He is still wearing his work vest and still in work boots. By now, I am freaking out and actually ran into the bathroom to think of what I needed to do. The woman at the bar saw me run into the bathroom and came to check up on me. I asked her about the man in the construction uniform at the bar and she told me he was really weird, had arrived an hour before doors opened and stood outside waiting to come in. He didn't order a drink. He just appeared to be waiting. I asked this woman to get my boyfriend, who was just finishing sound check at this point. I told my boyfriend everything I knew about Andrew. Of course, my boyfriend went to him like a bat out of hell and interrogated him at the bar. He had no expression, as my boyfriend told him to get lost, that he never wanted to see him again. He took his hard hat and backpack and left. When the show started, I finally began to relax. My friends were there, and I felt a little more protected. I looked beside me, and you guessed it. Andrew had changed into regular, casual clothes and was standing right beside me. He just stared. I ended up hiding in the green room the entire show, and I left early with my boyfriend. We could not find him after that. My boyfriend asked how he was finding out my whereabouts, especially considering the art gallery trip was only talked about on a Facebook group event. 
I told him I never added Andrew on Facebook. My profile security settings were on the highest possible. My boyfriend asked if I still had Nicole as a friend on Facebook, and I said yes. I then realized that he was stalking me through her Facebook account, and I needed to block and delete her. It took a lot to accept that she was not real, had pretended to be my friend, was perhaps even paid by Andrew to gain my trust. That was hard to swallow. I blocked and deleted Nicole, and I never saw Andrew at an event ever again. Then, my boyfriend started getting strange friend requests on Facebook. One was from a fan of his band who lived in Ontario. My boyfriend initially was stoked and had no issue talking to this fan about his music and possibly making it out to Ontario for a show. But as the conversation went on, he got a bad feeling. More and more, this fan asked my boyfriend about his rose, which was what the fan referred to me as. The fan asked my boyfriend if he would bring his rose to the next show. My boyfriend got wise to this and blocked the fan immediately. He didn't tell me about this fan until a few months later. Then one day, I happened to be on my boyfriend's computer and noticed him in a Facebook conversation with a girl named Christina. She was beautiful. Blonde, thin, listed as a model and living in a city at three hours away. I couldn't help myself as the messages started to pile up while I was checking my email. I read my boyfriend's conversation with her and my heart sank. Initially, I thought he was having an affair with her. Christina was using such sweet language, sending pictures, asking him to meet up, asking if your rose would be mad if she found out. I was shaking when I called my boyfriend down and asked him straight up who the hell is Christina. My boyfriend said it was Andrew. I didn't believe him until my boyfriend told me about the fan, showed me all the messages, pointed out the location where all these messages were coming from, the same city we lived in. Andrew didn't realize at the end of every message it said, sent from location. Not Ontario, not the nearby city, yet the profiles listed a different city entirely. She had hundreds of friends who ended up being bots from Thailand and India. She used the same style and language as the fan, and I noticed Andrew himself. I ended up creeping him on Facebook and finding out all the information and pictures he was using of Christina were actually from one of his mutual friends on Facebook. I found her actual legit profile and everything. Me and my boyfriend blocked and deleted all the accounts. I gave up my blog that I spent five years cultivating and gaining 5,000 followers. Andrew went as far as to find a few listings that my boyfriend had made on a classifieds website for various things. He actually contacted my boyfriend and set up a meeting to buy some tools. All was set to go. My boyfriend was going to meet him until the potential buyer called my boyfriend to ask, can I meet you at home? My boyfriend declined. The potential buyer then asked, will your rose be with you? My boyfriend hung up and deleted all of his ads. Andrew must have found them by searching my boyfriend's email. By now, I was terrified and went to the police. But unless he physically harmed or threatened me, nothing could be done. We lived like this for about another year. So by this time, I had been stalked by him for two years. Eventually, all the weird stuff just stopped and... I never heard from him again. His Tumblr is still active. He still posts foxes and likes and follows a very particular kink scene with redheads. I haven't seen or heard from him for several years now. My boyfriend is the only one who has ever heard Andrew's actual voice. We sense your presence, 
but we'd love to hear from you too. Don't be a silent specter. Say hi in the comments and let us know you're haunting the virtual realm with us.